Good morning, everybody. I'll be talking about PNS guided paravertebral block versus erector spinae plane block. Greetings from ISA Kalyan. Credit to sources of images Vincent Rogers, Nysera, and Internet. No disclosures ever. Always we have uh, thought about regional blocks for upper limbs and lower limbs, thoracic and chest. What options do we have? I come from a small nursing home setup where there is no additional help, no USG guided blocks uh, because of the strict PCP entity laws of Maharashtra. So what options will I have? Knowing the innovations of chest, that is the uh, supra and the infraclavicular area are uh, supplied by the cervical plexus block, the lateral pectorals, the medial pectorals, the nerve to the serratus anterior and the latissimus dorsi come from the brachial plexus and the T1 to T7 uh, spinal nerve supply the anterior and the medial uh, uh, intercostal nerves. What blocks do we have? That is the paravertebral block, the erector spinae plane block, after the spinal and the epidural, then you have the intercostal nerve block, the serratus anterior block, the pec, pec blocks, and anteriorly you have the transversus thoracis plane block. What is the paravertebral block? The paravertebral block is a small wedge shaped space where the spinal nerves emerge out of the intervertebral foramen and lie for some distance, which is bare without the myelin sheath under the trans, uh, transverse process and continues forward as intercostal nerve. The, it is the wedge-shaped space that is a triangle, the base of which is at the vertebral body. The tip lies at the intercostal space and uh, anterior laterally uh, is the parietal pleura, which, uh, uh, which is uh, the one we are afraid of. Uh, and posteriorly, you have the transverse process and the superior costal transverse ligament, which is pierced when you enter the paravertebral space from behind. Now, erector spinae, what is the uh, space? The erector spinae plane block is more superficial than the paravertebral space that is above the transverse process and beneath the erector spinae muscle. It runs along the extends along the length of the thoracolumbar spine and it is an inter interfacial plane block. It is not a direct nerve block. Uh, but it runs in the fascia beneath the erector spinae muscle, okay? And above the transverse process and close to the costotransverse transverse ligament and origin of the dorsal rami. What nerves are blocked in the paravertebral uh, block is the dorsal and the ventral rami and the sympathetic chain which lies ahead anteriorly. In the erector spinae, it, uh, the mainly the dorsal rami and its branches are blocked. Uh, and sometimes you get the ventral rami and its branches also, but almost never. That is the sympathetic ganglion is almost spared. Hence, it is a less intense block than the paravertebral block. And therefore, it can be used only for the pain relief and not as a sole anesthetic agent as the paravertebral block. The drug spreads in the paravertebral space, medially into the epidural space, laterally into the intercostal space, and cephalocordate spread of one, two to three uh, segments at, uh, from above and below the uh, site of injection. In the erector spinae, the spread is in the craniocordial directions. Okay, three to four levels uh, from C7 to T8, three to four levels from the point of middle insertion, giving a multidermatomal sensory block. Some spread do occur into the paravertebral space also. What are the landmarks? For the paravertebral and the erector spinae plane block, both the landmarks are the same since you have to hit the transverse process. One, you have to go beyond the transverse process into the paravertebral space. And the other, you are just above the transverse process beneath the erector spinae muscle. Therefore, the most prominent uh, cervical spine is the C7. Okay, uh, And the uh, scapular spine coincides with the T3 spinous process. The inferior angle of the scapula coincides with the 
uh, T7 spinous process. In the thorax, you have to remember that the uh, spinous process are at the level of the transverse process of the vertebra one below. Therefore, the T1 coincides with the T2 transverse process and the T2 spinous process coincides with the T3 transverse process. And the shape of the spine is such that the cervical and the lumbar at the, are at the deepest. The transverse process are at the deepest levels and the thorax the, from T5 to T10 is the shallowest. You have to remember this to avoid inadvertent pleural puncture. Now the land, uh, exact point to hit the transverse process is around three centimeters from the superior aspect of the spinous process, ipsilateral side is your point of needle insertion. Okay, you can see that this is the spinous process and this is the transverse process, bang, horizontal. And from that, you have to go bang perpendicular to the skin at all levels to hit the transverse process. Now, what is the drug in the volume concentration? If I'm using paravertebral block as a sole agent also, at one level, I'll be giving 10 ml uh, at a single level of either 0.2% tropivacaine or 0.125% bupivacaine for pain relief. And if I'm using it as a sole agent, it is 0.75% tropivacaine or 0.5% bupivacaine. Erector spiny plane block, since it is a facial plane block and the spread is more you have to give higher volumes than the paravertebral blocks, so 20 to 30 ml of 0.25% tropivacaine or 0.125% bupivacaine. Now, this is just to show how I'm eating a transverse process. This is a transverse process being hit after entering at three centimeters from the superior aspect of the trans, uh, spinous process, ipsilateral side. See, after hitting the transverse process, I'm walking off at the caudad or cupella to enter the paravertebral space, to enter the, uh, after piercing the superior costal transverse ligament. Now, the paravertebral space is, uh, contains fibroelastic tissue, which divides the uh, space into posterior and anterior. Anterior is more closer to the pleura, that is extra pleural. It is a continuous column longitudinally. Therefore, single injection covers multiple dermatomes. This is a space which is reached when we are using USG and PNS guided. In PNS guided, the dorsal rami, which continues into the uh, uh, intercostal nerve is stimulated and hence the end motor response of the intercostal nerve contraction. The posterior space is not very uh, continuous column. This is where you enter uh, in a LOR guided blocks. Therefore, there is no guaranteed spread longitudinally and hence you need multiple injections. In Wheeler et al. in 2001, utilized the nerve stimulation technique for performing paravertebral block for breast surgeries. That is the intercostal muscle contraction. He got after uh, the stimulation of the ventral rami of the spinal nerve. At the end point, he concluded was 0.4 milliamperes. You can use up to one also. One milliampere is also okay. If you do not want to advance it further, you get very good intense block. Uh, and Merofer at, at all use the same technique at two levels using 12 ml of ropivacaine of 0.75% uh, to do successful uh, radical mastectomies using paravertebral block as a sole technique. This is a simple comparison of PNS guided block. This is a uh, transverse process hit and then you walk off either caudad, this walking off caudad. See, you can see the intercostal muscle contraction very clearly. Okay, three centimeter ipsilateral. This is a spinous process. The markings are noted, and then you come out slowly and again hit the transverse process. Now you use it as a blocker. The markings which you keep your finger there and do not allow to go much further ahead. Updating the transverse process, I try to place it just above the transverse process beyond the erector spinae muscle to get the erector spinae plane block. 
you may or may not get the erector muscle contraction this is a direct muscle contraction here seen okay this can be used as a erector spinae plane block 20 ml of the required drug is given this is again a pns guided erector spinae plane block which is not necessarily the uh, no direct nerve stimulation it is the entire erector spinae muscle which has been stimulated at the posterior border of the erector spinae muscle and just above the transverse process you can see that the transverse process it is the 5 cm stimuplex needle 22 gauge and then i'm just placing the needle just above the erector uh, above the transverse process and beneath the erector spinae muscle to get a erector spinae contraction which can be seen very clearly okay this is a facial plane block and hence requires around 20 ml of la drug minimum this is a case study wherein there was multiple lymph nodes around the neck and a huge mediastinal mass come for axillary lymph node biopsy wherein i gave a single level uh, paravertebral block using as it as a sole technique for anesthesia after hitting the transverse process i enter the paravertebral space piercing the superior costal transverse segment you can see the t1 contractions that is the intercostal brachial contractions very nicely seen here okay this was enough to do the surgery and no sedation was also needed where to walk of cordad or kefalad this picture shows very well that in the if you go kefalad the pleura is very close to the paravertebral space because it is a wedge shapes more lateral you go the more pleura is closer in the kefalad uh, region therefore it is better and safer to walk cordad to enter the paravertebral space now for both the process you have to hit the b bank perpendicular if you go more medially you enter the csf the intradural space or there is a dural cuff to cause total spinal or high spinal or an bilateral epidural blocks are also known and you have to use a blunt needle a blunt needle does not injure the spinal nerves whereas the pointed needle can cause more injury the amatomes have to be known exactly to gear and remember that for a paravertebral block two to three levels beyond above and below the point of in injection and for a uh, erector spinae plane block it is three or four level uh, of dermatomes above and below the site of injection indications are the simple mastectomy the single level paravertebral block at the thoracic level t5 the same is a uh, erector spinae plane block both are enough for a cancer breast surgeries involving the axilla or the muscles you need to add pectoral nerve uh, pec, pec blocks or the uh, serratus anterior plane block along with a paravertebral block or and a erector spinae plane block for a rib fracture you need continuous infusion of either thoracic paravertebral block or erector spinae plane block for renal liver upper abdominal surgeries you uh, it, uh, an erector spinae plane block or paravertebral block is good enough so is for herpes zoster now this is my article of paravertebral block for modified radical mastectomy published in jccr and this is a pns guided uh, thoracic paravertebral block for modified radical mastectomies in high risk cases published recently in the month of september uh, the these are the case studies which i have done almost 500 cases few shown most of them were asa grade 3 two or four with the low ejection fractions uh, lung diseases bronchitis copd post covid lungs obesities uh, parkinsonism kyphoscoliosis and they were the sole uh, paravertebral block was so, uh, the sole agent for uh, 
radical modified radical mastectomies wherein the sedation was given in the form of midazolam fentanyl minimal ketamine or dextomid and uh, you can see that the day uh, discharge total duration of hospital stay was around 2 to 3 with no icu or stay at all uh, these are the reports which uh, none of the cases needed conversion to ga most of them were sole a a a anesthetic agent using landmark or nerve stimulator where the nerve stimulator technique uh, the current was around minimum was 0.3 and maximum was up to 1 the needle used was short beveled uh, non cutting stimuplex needle or two is needle the time required to do the block was around 11 minutes and the surgical readiness was around 11 minutes the drug used were ropivacaine bupivacaine along with adrenaline xylocaine no recovery analgesia was 100% this is a pns video showing a uh, paravertebral block for modified radical mastectomy where the paravertebral block was used at two levels this is the transverse process being hit and then the needle is walked off the transverse process cordially to get the intercostal muscle contraction here and the same was repeated again at t t5 after hitting the transverse process the needle was uh, walked off the transverse process cordially to enter the paravertebral space piercing the superior costal transverse ligament you get the intercostal muscle contraction the stimulation of the dorsal rami okay in an lor and a pns guided block you enter bank perpendicular in uh, 2 to 3 2.5 to 3 cm lateral to the spinous process but in the usg guided blocks the that space is occupied by the probe therefore your needle direction is from lateral to medial okay so if you want to play space you don't go more medial then sometimes you hit the the pleura is very close if you are more lateral and medially you have to follow the needle lest you enter the uh, central neuroaxial a region giving a bilateral epidural or more dangerous the total spinal therefore i think that the pns guided block are more safer than the usg guided block limitations of the using paravertebral block for mastectomy is that it does not block the medial and the lateral pectoral nerves that is anterior nerve and the nerve to the lateral uh, latissimus dorsi therefore you need a pec block or a serratus anterior plane block or in block both of them higher up in the brachial plexus using interscalene or the supraclavicular nerve block erector spinae plane block is poor man's paravertebral block it's a facial plane block simple and safer since it avoids going further into uh, towards the pleura and it gives good somatic analgesia as well as a visceral analgesia and catheter insertion is also possible there are many studies which have compared erector spinae and the paravertebral blocks but concluded that the paravertebral block provided superior analgesia than the erector spinae plane block thank you